Strategy Management Series. Video number 62 Strategy Formulation. Step 6. Strategy Selection Porter's Generic Strategies. Welcome back to the Ready MBA series on Strategy Management. In our previous video, we introduced Strategy Selection, the sixth step in the strategy formulation process. This step consists of identifying and selecting courses of action that a company may choose to achieve its strategic intent, mission, vision, and objectives. Strategy selection must consider the current strategies being executed by the company, the internal and external conditions under which the company is operating and the long-term vision provided by senior management. Based on these inputs, the planning team must identify and evaluate potential strategic alternatives for the company. After such analysis, the team must prioritize the selected few strategies they would recommend the company to pursue. Those will be evaluated and validated in the next step of the strategy formulation process. The first group of strategies to be validated is the one composed by strategies currently being implemented by the company. The planning team must evaluate their efficacy and applicability to the new strategic scenario in which the company finds itself. The second group of potential strategies to be considered was defined in the previous step of the strategy formulation process, SWOT analysis. The third group of strategies are the ones required to achieve the long-term vision and objectives defined by senior management and the strategic intent. To help define those, the planning team can leverage generic strategies and strategic frameworks. Generic strategies are fundamental approaches that businesses adopt to gain a competitive advantage and position themselves effectively within their industry or market. Strategic frameworks are analytical tools that help the planning team visualize the specific conditions in which the company finds itself, and based on their results, enable the company to identify potential strategies to be executed. In this episode we will kick off the review of the different generic strategies that can be used by a company. These generic strategies help businesses make strategic decisions about how they will compete in the market, allocate resources, and differentiate themselves from competitors. Porter's Generic Strategies is a framework about gaining a competitive edge in the market. It revolves around two fundamental types of competitive advantage, low cost and differentiation. By combining these competitive advantages with the scope of markets a company targets, we create a simple 2x2 matrix. The vertical axis represents competitive scope, ranging from broad to narrow focus, while the horizontal axis represents competitive advantage, encompassing cost and differentiation. From this matrix, three generic strategies emerge, cost leadership, differentiation, and focus. Let's take a closer look. In the cost leadership strategy, companies aim to be the lowest cost producer in the industry by optimizing operations, leveraging economies of scale, and minimizing costs. This approach is particularly effective when the market consists of price-sensitive buyers, lacks differentiation opportunities, or has customers who prioritize affordability over brand distinctions. Cost leadership can be achieved through offering the lowest price available or providing the best price value in the market. Walmart is an example of a company employing cost leadership, offering affordable prices to a wide customer base. Similarly, Southwest Airlines follows a cost leadership strategy by streamlining operations and eliminating unnecessary frills, allowing them to provide budget-friendly air travel options to a broad customer base. On the other hand, the differentiation strategy aims to be unique in the industry by meeting important buyer needs. Companies invest in product features, quality, branding, or exceptional customer service to stand out. This strategy enables companies to charge premium prices and cultivate customer loyalty. However, it carries the risk that consumers may not value the differentiation enough to justify the higher prices. Apple's iPhone exemplifies this strategy, as it combines unique features, sleek design, and seamless integration with other Apple devices, offering customers a premium and distinct mobile experience. Now, let's explore the focus strategy, which involves targeting specific market segments or niches with tailored products or services. This can be achieved through cost focus or differentiation focus. 
Successful focus strategies rely on sizable segments with growth potential that aren't critical to major competitors. Mid-size and large firms often combine focus strategies with differentiation or cost leadership approaches. Risks include competitors copying the strategy or consumer preferences shifting towards broader market attributes. In cost focus, companies aim to be the lowest cost provider within a narrow market segment. Dollar Tree is an example, offering a wide range of products at extremely low prices, specifically targeting budget-conscious consumers. In differentiation focus, companies differentiate their offerings for a specific market segment. Tesla stands out with high-performance electric vehicles, advanced technology, and a premium brand image, appealing to environmentally conscious and tech-savvy customers. It is important to note that a differentiation strategy can be pursued with either a small or large target market. However, it is not effective to pursue a cost leadership in a small market because profits or margins are generally too small. Likewise, it is not effective to pursue a focus strategy in a large market because economics of scale would generally favor a low-cost or best-value cost leadership strategy to gain and sustain competitive advantage. Success in such spaces is generally temporary until a low-cost player successfully targets that segment. Porter's generic strategies imply different organizational arrangements, control procedures and incentive systems. Larger firms with greater access to resources typically compete on a cost leadership or differentiation basis, whereas smaller firms often compete on a focus basis. So, to recap, Porter's generic strategies framework provides three strategies, cost leadership, differentiation, and focus. Companies can achieve a competitive advantage by pursuing one of these strategies based on their target market and scope. Remember, cost leadership focuses on being the lowest cost producer, differentiation emphasizes unique offerings, and focus narrows down to specific market segments. Strategy selection plays a vital role in strategy formulation. Companies rely on Porter's generic strategies framework to determine their competitive position, which involves strategies like cost leadership and differentiation to shape their operations and stand out in the market. However, it's crucial to remember that this framework doesn't account for the dynamic environment or potential opportunities and threats. Therefore, it should be complemented by other frameworks that consider these factors and enable the development of additional strategies to stay adaptable and successful. That wraps up our discussion on Porter's generic strategies. We hope you found this video helpful in understanding different strategic options to gain a competitive advantage. Remember, choosing the right strategy is essential for long-term success in the business world. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more insightful videos on business strategy. See you soon!